it's Kelly Lanavola here and I am back with another video for W plus 9 and today we're going to be taking kind of a minimalist approach to card making so I'm going to be working with uh, Flora and Fauna 2 because I am crazy about those butterflies and then also the Happy Wishes set for the sentiment. Um, I was thinking about because I had a crafty lunch with a friend and we were kind of talking about how like the least amount of supplies to make a card that you would be happy with. And I remember um, when Paper Crafts Magazine was still being published, they had like a less than five steps kind of um, thing that they would do or highlight. They would they would like highlight it if the designer had less than five steps. Um, I don't have less than five steps, but I tried to keep my um, products to a minimum to see if I could come up with something that I still enjoyed. Um, so basically what I came up with is I, I love butterflies and I love rainbows. Those things both make me happy. So when I'm trying something new, I tend to revert back to the two things that I know that I love. Um, and that just makes it the rest of the approach easier. So I picked the largest butterfly from the Flora and Fauna 2 set. And then I'm just going to stamp a couple of them down because I want it to be a one layer panel. I stamped a couple that I wanted to be in the front. And then I'm going to mask those ones and then stamp just a couple in the back so they fall behind each other. So basically my supplies are going, I'm not counting things like paper and glue, like your staple things. Um, so stamps, ink, Copic markers, um, pens for detailing, and then a glitter pen. So W plus 9 has some really awesome uh, colors available for fall. These aren't new colors, they are colors that are already in the W plus 9 um, store, but they're just really good fall colors. And I'm not great about using fall colors. Like I have a tendency to opt for the um, brighter colors. So I wanted to try to incorporate these into my rainbow to have it a, a more soft or more muted. These work great with the um, ranger blending. The only thing that I do is when I'm working on my craft mat, which is what my background is, when I'm blending them, I kind of like dab them off onto the craft mat before I bring them to the paper, just because the color is so strong. Um, and then they blend just as well as, I mean, really any other inks. Um, they just have a, because they soak into the paper, they have a softer finish. It's more like a velvety finish. And I just wanted to show you here, like, if you're not happy with the concentration of the color, uh, like, you can always go back. Like, I didn't feel like my red was dark enough. I felt like um, it was looking kind of pink. So I just went back in and, you know, reapplied it to make it darker. So just keep working with it until you're happy. For the colors, I used Cranberry Crush, Sweet Nectar, Wild Mango, Apple Teeny, Falling for Blue, and Bloomsbury. So... Those are just the colors that I picked, and then I'm going to be doing um, the Copa coloring. I picked just a couple of gray markers because, like I said, I'm trying to do a minimalist approach. So really what all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be playing up um, kind of the color that's in the background already, what we've already put down. So I'm going to draw in some shadows. I prefer to do my shadows from is if my light source was in the top right, so my shadows would be to the bottom left. You do whatever's comfortable for you. That's just how I learned it in art class, so it's kind of stuck with me over the years. And I'm starting with my darkest color. I added shadows not just to um, the sides of the butterflies, but also around the body and a little bit underneath the top wings. You'll see that the shadows go over the butterflies that are in the background. Because if they were on top of each other like that, they really would. The shadows would cast onto the next butterfly. So once I had all of those laid in with the C5, I'm going to go back in and start blending with the C3. I'm really not going too much farther outside the line that I already have laid down there. Um, I'm just trying to soften that. I mean, it's, it's, it's a dark line. C5 is real. It, it's a medium shade, but it's dark comparative to the softer background we have going on. So I'm just going to blend those. And then the last one I'm going to do is a C1. And you'll see with the C1, um, I'm doing a little bit of shading inside their bodies, but it almost looks like, like a ghost shadow, like the way that the C1, um, 
kind of lightens the color in the background. And the reason it does this is because W plus nine inks are alcohol based. So they work with Copics. They, you can remove their color by adding a lighter color, just like you would if you were using Copics. So once all the shadows were done, I'm going to go back in and do um, just a little bit of detailing. Like I'm happy with the way that those butterfly looks right now because I feel like they look different. You know, a lot of times with outline images, we color the entire image and these just, they share the same coloring as the background, but you can do, you know, just a few things to make them pop off the page. So you saw I had two writing pens. Normally I outline all of my images and this is going to be no different, but I'm using a larger nibbed um, pen. This is a 0.25 to outline the outside of my butterfly. I'm going to switch over to a 0.02 to do the fine lines on the inside. I wanted, I still wanted those lines to stand out, but I didn't want to lose the, um, the delicate feel that Dawn has drawn into them. So I switched the pen size so that the lines wouldn't be super thick or overwhelming. And again, line width is something that you can kind of play around with, um, to get different impressions for how your card's going to feel. The the lighter the line, the, the softer the feel, or you could go super bold like a, a 0.65 and that would be a really thick line. So uh, somehow I lost some footage here. You'll see that there's little white dots in the background. I used my jelly roller. Instead of adding the white detail to the butterflies, I added the white dots to the background. And I felt like it just kind of gave it like a softer little magical feel. Um, and it, all it is is dots. I concentrated them closer to the butterflies and then they got less as they um, transitioned out into the background. So here I'm going to use my mini Misty to do my sentiment. I'm going to be using pure black uh, W plus nine ink. It's a great ink for sentiments. It stamps really crisp. It's one of my favorite ones. I'm just going to go ahead and stamp that down. And then um, for the just a little extra detail. I'm going to add some highlights using the white gel pen and I'm just going to add little lines to the uh, lettering and this is going to make it appear as though it's shiny even though it's just flat and not shiny at all. So you can do that just little lines paying attention to where your highlights coming from. So that's basically the entire card, totally minimalist, very little supplies and I'm still really happy with it. So maybe that's something you might want to give a try. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you guys on the next video. Bye.